Hi everyone, my name is Karen, this is my channel Rather Be Reading, and today I'm bringing to you my July mid-month wrap-up. So the first book that I completed in the month of July was Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy by Cassandra Clare, Sarah Reese Brennan, Maureen Johnson, and Robin Wasserman. So this is a bind-up of 10 novellas set in the Shadowhunter world following the Mortal Instruments. So there are 10 novellas. I'm just going to go through quickly my rating on each of the individual novellas. So I gave Welcome to the Shadowhunter Academy 3 stars, The Lost Herondale 3 stars, The Whitechapel Fiend 3.5 stars, Nothing But Shadows 3 stars, The Evil We Love 3.5 stars, Pale Kings and Princes 4 stars, Bitter of Tongue 4 stars, The Fiery Trial 4 stars, Born to Endless Night 4.5 stars. That was my absolute favorite. And Angels Twice Descending, I gave four stars. So the average rating was about, I believe, 3.65 stars, and I rounded it to a 3.5. As you can see from the ratings, it kind of got better as it went along. At first, I was like, when they were kind of like 3, 3.5, I was like, oh, it's all right. Um, but there were definitely some really great novellas towards the end of this collection, and I just really, really um, have been enjoying the Shadowhunter world and being immersed in it. So I've read basically everything now um, before the Dark Artifices series, with the exception of the Shadowhunter Codex. Now, I don't know if that's something that you need to read. So if you have read the Shadowhunter Codex, please let me know if that's something that you like should read or if you don't really need to. Um, please do let me know because I don't want to go into Lady Midnight without having read that if I need to, but I'm not really clear. So if you do know that, please do let me know down below. The next book I completed is One Hour's Approval on NetGalley. So thank you to NetGalley and the publisher so much for approving me to read The Weight of Lies by Emily Carpenter. So this is a kind of mystery thriller type book about a girl, well not a girl, a woman. She is an adult whose mother wrote a like 70s horror novel that was kind of like one of those based on a true story horror novels that surrounded like kind of some maybe true life events in her life and it's a very very popular real cult classic of a novel people absolutely love it it's got a huge massive fan base and like real fanatical fans and this girl has quite a strange relationship with her with her mother who wrote the novel and um, basically, it ends up being that she decides to publish a book about her life growing up with her mother, and as part of that, she ends up going to this island on which the book is set and meeting the girl who's like the main character of this story and finding out, trying to find out exactly what went on, what's true, what's not true in the book, and trying to find out the real story kind of behind this novel. Um, I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed the setting on the island. I found that... I just really like the whole island thing it adds like kind of a creepy feel that I just really enjoyed. I loved that this was set around a 70s horror novel. I just really, really enjoyed that. It also had like some plot twists that I didn't see coming. Um, I will say that parts of it are not necessarily that believable. Like the stuff that happens in all of these kind of books that you go, hmm, would that really happen? Probably not. But I did still really, really enjoy it. And in the end, I gave this 3.75 stars. Next on audiobook, I listened to Rogue by Julie Kagawa. This is the second book in the Talon series. So this is one I listened to an audio, as I said. So the narrators of this one are Caitlin Davies, McLeod, McLeod Andrews, Chris Patton, and Tristan Morris. So there is a fourth POV added in this one, and so we have a fourth narrator, Tristan Morris. Um, and I am still really enjoying the, like, multiple... Um, narrators. Um, I did think the addition of the fourth... POV was too much though. Not because of the narrator or anything, I just thought there was just too many POVs going on. Three is probably generally about my limit of where I can really get involved with all of the characters. And once that fourth one was added in, I did start to struggle. There's also, I find it hard to talk about this book because it is the second book in a series and I don't want to give anything away. There is a love triangle, a very big love triangle in this series, and I fall very heavily on one side of the love triangle. Um, and I don't really know at this stage. You know, sometimes you might fall on one side, but you can still always tell kind of which way we're headed. I don't really know what path the author is going to take the character down. I find the main character very frustrating at this point. There is something that she is being very pig-headed about, which I don't want to talk about because it's a spoiler for the first book. But it really frustrates me because it just, oh, it's just very frustrating. And I also don't get why one of the other characters is so like blatantly following the main character at this point. Because it just, it doesn't seem like 
there's any reason for it. Um, so I definitely didn't enjoy this one as much as the first book, even though the first book was a bit mm, hit and miss as well. In the end, I gave this 2.75 stars. I will continue on with the series because they do have all of the books that are out so far on Overdrive, but I'm not loving it. Next, I completed my reread of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince by J.K. Rowling. I adored this, obviously, of course, five stars. I loved that this one has all of, like, so much, like, relationship and Quidditch stuff. I just love all of that stuff. Um, and I just really, really enjoyed this. And as I said, five stars. Next, I finally completed an audio Blackbird by Anna Carey. This is narrated by Emma Galvin. So if you recall, this is one that I had out and I listened to, like, 70% of or something and then it expired and I didn't get to finish it and it took months for me to get it again so I was glad to finally get to complete this um I did it did take me quite a while to get into the narration um and I did find it the type of story that was hard to focus on like a lot of times a little bit of time would have gone and I had to really think about what had happened because I hadn't been playing that close of attention um, but I did enjoy this. There's a character in this, a side character called Izzy, who I really, really love. She has some great commentary at one point about slut shaming someone due to like revenge porn. So there was a girl at her school who um, texted a picture of her breasts to her then boyfriend. And when they break up, the boy then, I don't even know what's when they break up. She just, she texted her boobs to a boy and he forwarded the picture to all of his friends. And the girl was completely, you know, ostracized and treated like a slut because of um, that action, and I just really loved all of Izzy's commentary on that. I will say that there are two characters in this who have, it's not insta-love, but it's like a real, like, insta-connection type of thing that did feel, like, really over the top. Um, and I, the kind of plotline where you head towards the end, I don't know if I'm 100% on board with, but there was a lot of, like, plot twists and, like, WTF moments in this that had me definitely wanting to pick up the second book as its own duology. I really, really want to know where this is going to end up. And in the end, I rated this 3.25 stars. Next, I completed The Fiery Heart by Rochelle Mead. This is the fourth book in the Bloodline series. Um, I really enjoyed this one. I did think that maybe there was a bit of filler in this, but we go into a dual POV in this, which I didn't, if you told me before that was going to happen, I would have been like, oh, I don't want that to happen, but I actually ended up really enjoying the dual POV. I actually thought it added a lot to the story. There's not, again, not too much I can say about this because it is the fourth book in a series, but I really, really enjoyed it. The ending totally slayed me. There is some commentary um, in this on date rape and consent, which I really, really loved. And as I said, the ending totally slayed me and I fully expect a super angsty fifth book and I can't wait for it. In the end, I gave this one four stars. Next, I read a graphic novel, and that was In Real Life by Cory Doctorow and Jen Wang. So this is a graphic novel that surrounds a girl who gets into um, an online, like, role-playing game, I believe it is, and she connects with this other person, like, these other people online, and it becomes kind of about people who, like, farm for, like, online gold. I'm sorry, I really don't know the proper terminology for this because I am not a gamer, and having said that, I really thought that I would struggle to get into this graphic novel because I am not a gamer and I'm not, like, hugely into that whole world and I didn't think I'd be able to connect to it. I actually really, really enjoyed this. I connected to it a lot more than I thought I would. I really enjoyed the artwork, um, which I wish I could show you, but I don't, I've taken it back to the library. But I also, the main thing I really loved about this was the commentary that I took away from it on the way we connect with people online. As I said, I just really, really loved this and I gave it four stars. Next, I finally read Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. So I've never read anything by Morgan Matson. This was the first book I've read by her. I've been wanting to get into her for a really long time, and I was not disappointed. So this book follows a main character, a girl named Amy, whose father recently passed away in a car accident, and Amy has not driven since the accident. And so her, they're moving across the country, and her mother arranges for... Um, this boy Roger to drive Amy and the car because they need to get the car um, across the country and so she goes on this kind of epic road trip with um, Roger and they decide to take some detours kind of along the way. This was so 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 cute. I loved the road trip. Like this made me want to go on a road trip so badly. Like, I was intensely jealous of the main characters the whole time that they were just able to, like, kind of get in the car and drive wherever they felt like it and just eat snacks and listen to music and just chat in the car. And I was just, I was loving it, to be honest. And I, I really liked the commentary in this on grief. And I really took away a lot from this about 
how different grief is for each individual person and not everyone grieves in grieves in the same way and one person's grief is not the right way to grieve and etc i just really really i loved this to be honest and i gave it 4.5 stars and i'm really looking forward to reading more from morgan matson now so next I was just going through my Kindle and I noticed that I had a short story that was literally only like 30 pages so I decided to read it um, because it was obviously really quick and easy to read and it was called What Was Left by Travis West. So this is a horror short story um, about a girl in kind of a dystopian world that kind of involves cannibalism. I was kind of pleasantly surprised. I it, Fully went into this expecting it to be shit, and it was all right. Uh, the writing wasn't too bad at all, but I will just say, even though I know this is a short story, but I really felt like it needed to be more fleshed out. Like, this thing is only 30 pages, and I felt like even expanding it to something like 50 or 60 pages would have added so much more to the story, but I did enjoy it a lot more than I expected to, and in the end, I gave it 2.75 stars. And the final book that I read in the first half of July was Finding Eden by Camilla Beavers. So this is another one that I've had on my Kindle for ages that I believe I got free from Amazon a long time ago. And this is a young adult kind of paranormal story about a girl who has always, her whole life, been able to see like colors and like people's auras and she can like, you know, tell when someone's lying or upset with her, etc. But the color she finds very overwhelming. Like she wears sunglasses a lot to try block out all of this color. One day a new boy arrives at school and she cannot see anything in his aura and she's been having these weird dreams and it just all kind of kicks off from there. This is not a long book. It's only like 200 pages, so I don't want to give too much away. I will say though, I didn't really like this book at all. This book has a lot of mistakes in it and I can kind of forgive that in a self-published book because I understand and this is self-published because I understand that the author can't afford like she's trying to get it out there and I understand that she can't always afford to pay someone to edit and find all of the mistakes and stuff and having said that I found a mistake in Amy and Roger's Epic Detour and who knows how many hands that one's been through so I can forgive that but what would at the very start of the book, the chapter was entitled Epilogue. And then at the end of the book, the final chapter was entitled Prologue. Like, what? That is the wrong way around. I not, I just, that is mind-boggling to me that someone who is an author, so I presume that you're into literature and writing and reading and stuff in general, I don't understand how you can get that wrong. It was just, that was absolutely mind-boggling to me. But I also just didn't really enjoy the story. All the characters were underdeveloped. They just made extremely weird decisions like that just it didn't make none of the decisions made sense and they were never explained as to why they were doing all this stupid stuff and overall the whole story just didn't make a lot of sense to me I just I really didn't enjoy this unfortunately and in the end I did give it two stars so those are all of the books that I managed to complete in the first half of July overall not too bad of a reading month that I've gotten off to so far and I'm hoping to really keep momentum going um, into the second half of July because I have a whole lot of books that I need to get to as always I would love to chat to you guys in the comments down below if you've read any of these books if you have any thoughts if you know about the Shadowhunter Codex thing please let me know I'd also love to know what books you've been reading so far in July especially if you've really been loving them do let me know down below please like this video if you liked it please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel that's all I've got for this video today. Bye guys!